Yes, uh, good morning you all. Uh, again, welcome to this uh, Margadarshi Spandana. And uh, we are looking at uh, the lesson yesterday, what we have finished and then let us go further today as to what is there for today. I think uh, two dear lesson was covered with that question answers were covered. Uh, I hope again the question answers you have taken good care of jotting down what is required to be. Uh, one good small practice I would want you to have is uh, please uh, I think before you finish your examination. It is it is you know rather to get better marks it is not that I am making you work too hard for it. Obviously, you have to work little. Uh, uh, once at least before going to the examination those important questions I think I will be jotting it down and telling you what is a possible question for this examination do not just hang on to that but then you know I cannot claim the whole questions will come all the questions will come there but then some of them will uh, what is your homework will be is one good uh, you know attempt at home do not go to write the exam straight away I, I know this answer go and attempt there no frame your answers completely and then go and write there because that is very very important because uh, we have seen students see I, I think I have been through with these classes for a very, very long long time I sit and uh, I, I make the students sit and write the Romeo and Juliet uh, question I sit and you know they I make the students sit and write the uh, question answers on two dear all of them uh, Vandana Shiva uh, down the line it will come all the questions at least two or three important questions are attempted and frame your own answer do not come out with textbook answer as ma'am was telling in uh, Romeo and Juliet, do not come out with your version of Romeo and Juliet, we want the textbook answer maybe somewhere. Your ideas will be given, your expressions will be given out there, but down the line when they ask you a typical question on one particular topic, please hang on to that, do not go beyond that. See, 6 mark questions are where you can analytically go give little more thought on to, uh, okay, this is what I want to write, this is what is my idea about, maybe in 2 year when you look at it, your idea of law and justice, what is happening? In the conclusion paragraph, actually you can give, this is how we are supposed to change it, you can give that idea, but not uh, no, previously, not that uh, uh, in, in four mark question you write in between, you bring your own idea and write your own story that is not going to happen you need to know the story properly. So, that is the thought of uh, the two dear uh, I hopefully the Romeo and Juliet also. Now, today we are going to come down to one more lesson uh, your, your favorite lesson I would call it uh, on children. Uh, whenever I take this lesson uh, in the classrooms uh, you have a smile in the children's face that is obviously because uh, a little on uh, I think uh, to the parents we um, you know uh, not shout but then we, we make them realize see your children are not your children. <laughs> right? No, not exactly not your children, but then you are that that new generation is always an asset. It is that future, that, that secured future what we have. So, that is what we are looking at. You are going to look at on children uh, from Rajini ma'am and then you are going to look at linkers. Again, this question is very, very tricky. Linkers is a question like uh, uh, you know if you do not practice a little, you may lose all the three marks. So, please be little more alert on to this particular lesson um, uh, I mean topic linkers and be aware that okay this is what is happening and this is where I lack and this is how I am supposed to continue. So, please take down the notes as it is and uh, make good use of the classes which are happening. Hello dear students, welcome to another session of learning. Uh, today's topic is the most beautiful poem on children by Khalil Gibran. Khalil Gibran known to be a spiritual poet talks about more and more of spirituality in his uh, poems. He has uh, to his credit the one and only very popular book of poems called The Prophet. The Prophet is a spiritual guru and this one is an ex a part of the prophet. So, here the, pro the poet he tries to tell us how limited we should be in our possess possessions. We will love people so much that we hold them tight to us. Remember there is a saying that says when you love a bird very much you have to let it free. You have to let it free so that it flies and you will be happy seeing it flying. So, this is the message that the poet tries to give here and though on the superficial level it appears to be a message to the parents, it is a message to each one of us each one of us that we have to give ourselves, surrender ourselves to God and not carry behind us all our possessions, our belongings and all the beloved ones. Let us move on to the poem and then talk what the poet wants to talk about children. 
This poem, as I told you, it is from the uh, collection of poems, The Prophet. The Prophet is supposed to be uh, a book in wherein it, he, the, the author talks about different topics like children, love, marriage, friendship and society, parents, everything. There are many topics and each poem has a different theme in it, different topic in it. So the poem it starts, you know, the story actually goes this way. When the poet, the prophet, he, you know, moves from one place to another giving all the spiritual discourses. And at one place, he finds that there is a woman sitting in front of him with his baby held close to her chest. She has hugged the child, child very tightly because she loves her very much, loves the child very much. So the more she loves, she holds the baby more and more tightly and then she speaks to the prophet asking him to tell something about children. Uh, in answer, in response to it, he starts the poem and he says, My dear child, your child is not your children are not your children. They are from the God. They are the lives longing to live. So that is how he starts. You think, you think that they are your children, they are your position and that's why you hug them so tightly to your bosom. But they are not your children. They are the life's longing for itself. Life wants to live and live and live. So it is a cycle of life. It is just the chain. Life wants to live continuously. It never wants to die at all. So life and death are two contrasting things. So life doesn't want to put an end to itself. So it wants to live again and again. And that is itself is called as longing. Longing, yearning. Desiring too much, very strong desire to live. And the children are born in this desire of life. They, life wants to live, therefore children are born. They come through you but not from you is the next line. Here the poet tries to say that the children are born through the parents. Parents are not the creators. They are just a bio media. And without God's grace, so let me be very clear when I am talking about this poem, See, whenever I talk about this poem, I am talking about the two concepts, you know, two uh, actual variations. Next he says that they come through you but not from you. Let us understand one thing. This one can be understood in two different ways. One is the poetic language, one is the literature part of it. The second one is the spiritual part of it. So, when we talk about the poem in a spiritual manner, he says, see, God is the one who creates the children, who creates life. And we are just the media through which the life comes on earth. So he says, the children who are not yours, but you, yet you think that they are your children, they come through you, but not from you. You are not the creator of the children, but they are just the media through which you will be bringing them to the earth. So, they are with you all the time, yet they do not belong to you. That's why all the time we feel that our children are ours. They are our possessions, but they do not belong to us at all. Though they are with us, they belong to somebody else and some other places. The other place here is the tomorrow. Okay, so the poet here very neatly he says, because they do not belong to you, because you have no rights at all, because you do, you you are not the creator of your children, you just give love but not your thoughts into their minds. Just love them. Love them unconditionally. Just give them all that you can. But never put your words into their mouth. Your thoughts into their brain. <clears throat> that is impossible. So you can just give your love to your children, but never your thoughts. Once we start giving our thoughts into our beloved ones, you know, we start overpowering them and they become helpless. They become very dependent on us. So he says, no, don't do that. Just give your love and not your thoughts. And he also says that, give your, just house their bodies, but not their souls. You just have to protect their bodies, not the soul. Because the soul doesn't belong to us at all. The soul belongs to life and God. So when you do not have any control over it, when you do not have any authority over it, you can't even think of controlling or you can't even think of possessing it. So just house their body, protect their bodies, but not their souls. You can never do it. 
you can never ever think of protecting their souls and he continues to say that the children are more smarter the future generations are more smarter than the previous generations says they dwell in the house of tomorrow which you cannot even visit in your dream because they belong to tomorrow they are not today's children they are tomorrow's children and we are all today's we in the sense of parents we are today's children and our children are tomorrow so they dwell they have their house their future their views their dreams everything is in tomorrow and that tomorrow we can't even see we can't even see it in our dreams at least in our dreams we can't see how their children how our future generations think about so the poet advises the parents and the mother sitting over there that strive to be like them seek not to make them like you strive struggle hard work hard on <coughs> making you know, to be like them we should love we should want to be like our children they are very very cool careless bindas not worried about anything not too much tensed about acquiring money property saving it for the next seven generations our children are very very cool they they want to live the life at that moment so the poet advises the elders the previous generations the, especially the parents to struggle hard to be like them they are fast they are furious they are knowledge they are quick in thinking and they just want love themselves so let us all learn to be like our children but <coughs> do not seek to make them like you do not make them to be like you we have the parents have a very bad habit of talking you know when i was in that when i was that old when i was this old you know in my days when i used to go to school we gone are those days those days are gone they are finished they, they are all closed chapters and therefore he says life moves on not tarries with around yesterday that is with uh, yesterday at all tarry means to let us learn a new word it means linger around linger means to move around it does not move around it does not carry over whatever has happened yesterday life just goes on it does not stay with yesterday and move around the same place so whenever parents say when i was young when i was that you know when i was of your age i used to work hard i used to earn so much of money and i never had bag i never had books yes yeah our parents also never had money as much as your parents have now so that comparison never comes even your parents even the parents of these generations they have much more comfort than the parents that of the yester years that is no that is submissed that is not seen at all that they only talk about the hardship so the poet says life just moves on so don't even talk about all these things don't seek to be make your children like you just go get along with them because life moves forward and not backward at all it can never go back you know life river you know like how we have read in borges life and river they are two metaphors they just move in the forward direction not reverse directions at all so it just goes along with you know and, and never can never come back so he says don't think too much about your children think more than thinking about the children think it in a spiritual way he says see you are the bows and children are the living arrows and he is the archer he here refers to god god is given as he he is the archer and we the parents are the bows while our children are the arrows they are the living arrows the archer's work is to set a target he sees the infinite path the path that never ends he knows in which path the child has to move he knows that that only talks you know talking about spiritually he understands that every child has his own destiny has his own goal has his own path to travel so the path for every the god for every child for every individual he has he has set a definite and an infinite path he knows that the path is meant for that person for that child so 
he wants to you know he holds the arrow he lets the arrow go swift and far in that infinite path he has decided where what has to happen to the person where he has to earn his living where he has to live and how he has to meet his meet his end so everything is destined so we have to strongly believe in destiny once we our life is destined this one you know will be free of all kinds of tension god sees the path he throws the arrow in that direction he wants the arrow to go swift very fast and very far for this he uses us the parents as bows so our bending we have to bend in the hands of the archer so that our children that is the arrows they move very far and they go and hit the infinite path in the proper uh, proper place proper target so for this we have to act as the um, bows therefore the poet concludes so you have to be happy so let your bending be for gladness when you know your life is also you know it also has a destiny it is destined you also have a destination and we also are born the parents are also born with a kind of purpose in life so our purpose is only to let the arrows that have come through us to let those arrows reach their destination we have to help the arrows reach that so let us all bend in the hands of our archer that is god and let it be for gladness happily you need to bend you don't have to crib you don't have to grumble at all because finally he concludes because he loves the arrow that flies the arrow that dart that reaches the target is loved by everyone so the archer loves his arrow and at the same time he loves the bow that is very stable he loves both of them the arrow and the bow so he loves this arrow that flies and the bow that is stable so in the, well this is the truth of life why do you have to grumble why do you have to struggle so think that your children are just with you they have been sent to you by god as god's messenger to be taken care of so when we understand all these things our life does not become miserable at all we have to keep these things in mind both the parents and everyone else we have to understand this and help the arrows fly to higher heights fly to fly and reach a perfect target okay students talking about the questions of this uh, poem on children mainly because this poem is one unit it cannot have two or three bits in it it is considered as one unit mainly the question that could be important is the summary of it whenever any question is asked you will have to understand the poem and then write the summary for it so most of the questions that are asked could revolve around the summary itself so there could not be any other answer other than this for example i am just giving you here how does the poet say why does the poet say categorically he categorizes and he says see your children are not your children categorizing means telling to the parents alone he says no 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 your children are not your children at all so how does he tell that why does he tell this so you will have to write down what the poet tries to say here again it the whole thing the whole of the uh, summary has to be explained in detail so once you know the previous uh, uh, slide we had uh, all the points that was written about the poem so just remember the poem in such sentences or phrases once you remember that probably the answers would be very easy for you so you'll have to write down the same thing why does the poet say that your children are not your children because children belong to yesterday uh, belong to the tomorrow uh, their life uh, you know they they come uh, through the parents but not from the parents they live with the parents <clears throat> but yet they do not belong to the parents their uh, uh, future you know their their life is they how they dwell in the house of tomorrow and they uh, that tomorrow cannot be seen the same thing the, almost the whole poem with few lines here and there you will have to write down as the answer so the next one this is a six mark question almost all of them are six mark questions only in case it is asked for a four mark one just shorten your answers 
According to the poet, what attitude should the parents have towards the children? What, what kind of attitude can a parent have to the child? Again the same thing, parents should not be over possessive, parents should let the child, children be free, be free. Parents should not compel the children, parents should not be forcing, you can write anything. But please remember, when you are writing a poem like this, which is very close to your heart, which is very close to your own life, you will be tempted to write your personal opinions. Please students, please write the answer only as a part of your syllabus. Do not put your own emotions into it. Do not put your own words on the paper. We are not asking for how you have gone through you know, because of your parents pressure. We don't want anything like that. See, just it should be from the poem and not from your own life. Again, I am telling you, there are two topics in the whole of your English syllabus which tempts you to put in more of your personal opinion. One is Romeo and Juliet, the second one is this one. You will find, you, you want a way out, you know, you want to vent out your feelings and therefore you all start writing about how your parents are pressurizing you how you have been forced to go to tuitions, how you have been made, made to write assignments, how you have been made to write tests after tests, but parents are still not happy. We, we definitely can understand. We as teachers can definitely understand what situations you are going through. But let us all meet outside the examination hall, outside the question paper and talk to each other. You have anything like that, you can speak to your teachers, but please do not push, you know, fill your question, answer sheets with all these feelings. We don't want your life feelings in your answer paper. So let this one be a very small and a brief answer taken from lines and phrases from your text. Again the same, all the three of them, they have the same thing to be written. The whole of the you know, questions here, it only targets, it only takes, uh, considers the summary of the poem. So summary if you have understood, remember the lines here and there, put them and as usual, tell me how will you write your answers? Yes, you will underline them, highlight the answer. So that is it about on children. Hope you have found this learning of English very easy and scoring marks in English also should be easy for you. Okay, we will meet in another session. Thank you for now.